Next, Rose Horowitz, 12th grader at Mount Ararat High School. Rose's interests include costume design, historic fashion, and archery. In the Basement of the Goodwill Store by Ted Kuzer. In musty light, in the thin brown air of damp carpet, doll heads and rust. Beneath long rows of sharp footfalls like nails in a lid. An old man stands trying on glasses, lifting each pair from the box like a glittering fish and holding it up to the light of a dirty bulb. Near him, a heap of enameled pans as white as skulls looms in the catacomb shadows, and old toilets with dry red throats cough up bouquets of curtain rods. You've seen him somewhere before. He's wearing the green leisure suit you threw out with the garbage, and the Christmas tie you hated, and the ventilated wingtip shoes you found in your father's closet and wore as a choke, and the glasses which finally fit him, through which he looks to see you looking back, two mirrors which flash and glance are those through which one day you, too, will look down over the years when you have grown old and thin and no longer particular. And the things you once thought you were rid of forever have taken you back in their arms. Rose Horowitz, grade 12, Mount Ararat High School. Rose's favorite subjects in school are history, art history, chemistry, and biology. Mrs. Caldera's House of Things by Gregory Janikian. You are sitting in Mrs. Caldera's kitchen. You are sipping a glass of lemonade and trying not to be too curious about the box of plastic hummingbirds behind you. The tray of timeless forks at your elbow. You have heard about the back room where no one else has ever gone and whatever enters remains. Refrigerator doors, fused coils, mower blades, milk bottles, pistons, gears. You never know, she says, rummaging through a cedar chest of recipes, when something will come of use. There is a vase of pencil tips on the table a bowl full of miniature wheels and axles. Upstairs where her children slept, the doors will not close. The stacks of magazines are burgeoning. There are snowshoes and lampshades, bed springs and picture tubes, and boxes and boxes of irreducibles. You imagine the headline in the Literalist Express. House founders under weight of past. But Mrs. Caldera is baking cookies. She is humming a song from childhood. Her arms are heavy and strong. They have held babies, a husband, tractor parts and gas tanks. What have they not found a place for? 
It is getting dark. You have sat for a long time. If you move, you feel something will be disturbed. There is room enough only for your body. Stay a while, Mrs. Caldera says, and never have you felt so valuable. On an Unsociable Family by Elizabeth Hands. Oh, what a strange parcel of creatures are we. Scarce ever to quarrel or even agree. We all are alone, though at home altogether, except to the fire constrained by the weather. Then one says, "'Tis cold," which we all of us know, and with unanimity answer, "'Tis so." With shrugs and with shivers, all look at the fire, and shuffle ourselves and our chairs a bit nigher. Then quickly, preceded by silence profound, a yawn epidemical catches around. Like social companions, we never fall out, nor ever care what one another's about. To comfort each other is never our plan, for to please ourselves truly is more than we can. Next, Charlotte Benoit, our 12th grader from Greeley High School. Charlotte Benoit, for his or her participation in today's Poetry Out Loud Maine State Finals, the state champion and runner-up will receive special awards for their accomplishments. And now, I'd like to announce the 2016 Poetry Out Loud Maine State Runner-up, and the runner-up is Owen Sinclair, the 11th grader from Rangeley Lakes. <laughs> and your 2016 Poetry Out Loud Maine State Champion is Rose Horowitz. <laughs> 